Hello and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to show you how to make shortbread, probably one of the most famous products that has come out of Scotland, along with haggis and our tartan. The Scottish are very partial to baking. In fact, we can trace back our shortbread perhaps to medieval times, the 12th century, when they used to bake uh, a crisp bake in the oven using leftover dough, bread dough. Later on, sugar was added, butter was added, making it into a quite luxurious product. In fact, tale will have it that Mary Queen of, Queen of Scots was quite partial to her petticoat tails, so called because the shortbread dough was formed in a circle and then cut into triangles uh, with a point at the centre. I believe that such a petticoat was made in a circular form. So today we are going to use 225 grams of butter, softened. We're going to add 110 grams of caster sugar. This is very fine sugar. With this, we are going to beat it until it's light and fluffy. And then we're going to add some corn flour and all-purpose flour. Now you can see that the butter and sugar, I've creamed it just a little bit. It's still at a quite yellowy stage. We want it to be much paler and much lighter. I usually give it about eight minutes. This looks much paler and I've been beating for eight minutes and now I'm ready to put in the flour and the corn flour and a little pinch of salt. So I'm just going to sift to make a lighter texture. We can add the corn flour as well. gives it that lovely light crunch instead of a, a really hard crunch. It's got a very nice soft crunch to it. And also some, I use sea salt, so I'm going to just grind it a little bit. Corn flour tends to be a little bit uh, lumpy. You can go in with your hands, but it makes a very soft sticky dough. So what I like to do is I just fold the ingredients in together to form a dough. You can see at the moment it's very dry. Once the flour has been mixed in with the, uh, the butter, it will form a very, very soft dough. Now, I'm, in order to bring it right together, I'm going to put flour on my hand so that it doesn't stick too much. And just bring it together. Now, as you can see, it's a very, very light. It feels very, very light and it's very sticky as well. Now, I'm not too fussed about forming a very neat and smooth dough. You can't just roll this dough out on your worktop because it'll stick all over the place and it'll also stick to the rolling pin. So what I do is I roll it between two pieces of parchment paper, baking parchment. First, I put down some uh, a non-slip piece. It, this is just a piece of silicon so that it doesn't stick or it doesn't slip. It won't slip. I put my baking parchment there. I put my dough in the middle and put another piece of baking parchment over the top. Now, peel off the parchment paper, and then I think we're ready to cut. I'm just going to use this. So I'm just going to make them as close together as possible. Now we're ready to transfer the cookies onto the baking tray. Now I have a special way of doing this because again the dough is very sticky. So I first have, a, I've got this sort of uh, spatula palette knife and I dump 
cook it in some flour so that it's uh, pretty covered. And then I just go in very slowly and lift off the shortbread and move it onto the tray. So cover the spatula or the palette knife with flour, slide it under the dough and then slide it onto the baking tray. Now when you've done this you can um, of course roll the dough out again and make some more. It's very easy and it doesn't matter how many times you roll the pastry out, the cookies will always be good. My first tray of cookies is ready. Um, I'm going to chill those. I've got a very special way of chilling them. I'll show you in a moment. Um, I've scraped all the other bits of dough together and I'm going to roll this out again and make another tray of cookies. Now, I've managed to get two trays of shortbread biscuits out of the dough that we made. That's uh, 36 biscuits, which is pretty good. Um, and they have to be chilled before they go in the oven. So they're hard and then they will retain their shape. Before we do, we have to prick them with a fork. So I usually just do one prick per cookie or biscuit. I have a special way of chilling. So what I do is I put them outside. Um, now it's, it's quite cool. It's November, so uh, the, the weather here is really quite cold, cool enough to chill these shortbread biscuits before they go into the oven. Um, the birds don't seem to like them. Uh, we haven't got any mice. Uh, there are no other rodents in the, in the area. I don't have a cat. We don't have any dogs. Um, so it's quite, quite safe to put them outside. Now, while my shortbread biscuits are cooling outside, chilling, literally, in uh, the autumn air, uh, I'm going to put the oven on to 170 degrees uh, Celsius. I bake them for about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, when they're going just a very, very pale, pale uh, beige colour around the edges, uh, then they're done. You want to be them to be as pale as possible uh, and then it's a question of just waiting for them to cool down because when they cool down they'll crispen up a little bit as well. Very hard I know. Now my husband is a real cookie monster and he loves shortbread. Um, he's in the other room and uh, keeps popping in to, to find out if they're ready yet. Well they're not. He's going to have to wait. Now some people like their shortbread coated in chocolate. I usually do a little bit, of, a little edge around the outside. And what I use is 85% uh, uh, chocolate from, this is Lint. Lint is uh, a really good make, uh, Swiss make of chocolate. I enjoy eating it anyway. Um, but I find that it's the, the bitterness in the chocolate that complements the sweetness in the biscuit. Now what we've done is we've, we're going to melt the chocolate au bain-marie, and that means in a little bath of water, basically. I've got um, a saucepan filled, not filled, with a little layer of water, chocolate in the bowl. I place the bowl over the pan so that the bowl doesn't touch the water, over a low heat, and just let the uh, chocolate melt uh, gently. It'll be very hot, so I'm going to let the chocolate cool down a little bit, now the chocolate has melted so I'm going to take it off the saucepan and just put it to cool. This needs to really cool down, it's far too hot. So I'm just going to leave it to cool down. Now it would be really tempting to lick the chocolate off a spoon but chocolate is extremely, extremely hot and you would burn your mouth. So please take care when heating chocolate. I've taken the shortbread out of the oven and as you can see, they are a lovely creamy colour, a little bit uh, of a beige edge to them, just as they should be. 
we're going to leave them to cool down. Shortbread has cooled down now and what we're going to do is we're just going to dunk them in chocolate. Now you can do this any way you like. You can choose to paint the chocolate on the cookie or completely submerse it in, uh, in chocolate if you want to. What I do is I just dip them and so that there's a little edge around and then put it back on the tray. So we've got another one and we'll just go round so that we've got an edge. Let it drip off and put it down. Now you can see that your hands are full of um, chocolate. Lick them off. Mmm, lovely. And don't forget to wash your hands before you do the next cookie. Another traditional finishing touch is caster sugar just sprinkled over the top of your shortbread. Okay, Leo, so the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Can I try one? Yes. <laughs> Oh, I think it'd be nice. Mm. Really delicious. Nice cottage shortbread. Mm. <laughs> mm.